Hello, Cobrats, and welcome back to Sonic Unleashed. I'm Tri-Hi Tamer. Gotta get used to saying that and not messing up all these games I'm saying. Mess them up twice, in fact. Alright, it's time for the first formal nighttime stage of Apatos. Moonlit Town and all this stuff. It's gonna be different names for all the acts, and the Werehog stages are gonna be rather long in comparison. Got an item right there if we go back behind the starting area. Pretty well hidden, if I may say so. And yeah, by the way, get used to this music because you're going to be hearing it throughout the game. I don't know if I said it last time because I haven't edited the episode, I uploaded episode 1 today. Alright, so I'm trying to like do all these crazy things that I don't have the prerequisites for yet because I was practicing. And I'm getting hammered all over the place, might as well get used to my dodging a little bit and having unresponsive controls. Come on game, why are you being so rude to me? Alright, I thought there were rings over there because rings do count toward my S rank. Let's uh, do some siddly doodlies, if that is of comprehensible attire. Oh, I see a door. We've got to open it up if we want to get past. Yes, Chip, that is how it works. But it's not like Navi in that we have to press A to open doors. We have to press B and swing up a little bit. So much more intuitive. And these enemies are Dark Fries. They're pretty basic chirpy little birdie enemies. Toss them all over on each other, but they do kind of gang up, gang up on you. Pardon that weird stutter. <laughs> I was like running against the wall as it disappears. I knew I got my Hyrule Warriors habits from somewhere. I'm trying to construe my words in a certain way. Getting all this blue stuff, I may use that at a certain point, maybe in the last battle before things are over. But before we can get to our final little battle, that little collectathon thing. What's this, Sonic? Looks like there could be more around here, too. Alright, these are Dark Gaia Gate Keys. No real official name to them, I'm just going to be calling them that. Or maybe just call them Pieces of Three Keys or something. Alright, I'm not going to take you guys down manually. Well, I am using manual box grabbing because man means hand. Mono a mono. Bang, 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 Tiffany get you all over down. Okay, I thought there were not more enemies, and I thought there was an item up there, but it's just the key thing I need. Let's just come on and slam, and walk up to the nightmares. Take y'all down, very greatly, with my basic combos that I have. It's like I have to get all these materials to upgrade, but it's not Hyrule Warriors, or any of the Warriors games. Pretty sure there were Warriors games before this, because there's quite a few. Alright, hop up with my dash jumping abilities, and still a nice hitbox. Gotta watch for the red force that I'm able to grab, because there's quite a bit, and they do count towards your final things. Alright, in practice that was actually a blue thing, so I was wondering why I didn't get an S-Rank in practice, but that would be why right there. It'd probably be just enough as long as I uh, take down enemies pretty well. And here's more enemies right here. Let's just slam everybody together all over and take them down. Ah, uh, bam. Come on and slam. How many times am I going to be saying that through this Let's Play? I don't know. But this is just a fun thing to do. Just this a fun thing. Making fun of my stuttering as well. Wow, I usually don't stand up there. Tonic was like, sip towing if I'm switching my letters around, apparently. There we go, red force in there, and I failed in grabbing this thing. Let's just swing backwards. Swing low, sweet aware hog. Coming for to carry nobody home, except maybe Chip, if we can find out his true calling in life. Climb up this pole, because I know there's an item right there, there's uh, some red force down there. But by this cool bell tower is our completionist item, and this stuff is pretty completionist too, because you do need it for the S rank, as I've said all these little restaurant-like places around and give me some health that I didn't need, unless I did need it. Wasn't really paying too much attention. Wait, hold up, I'm pretty sure that's a red capsule there. Yes, I do want it. Not even if I'm high enough for the stuff that I need for the level. Sorry, I'm kind of scratching my head as I lift this thing up, although I need to involve the nunchuck as well. Oh, my head is just being very itchy. Just thinking about an itch gives you an itch. Very nice observation skills you've got there, Chip. Alright, I'm gonna make use of my blue stuff, press the C button, and go into Unleash Mode. Not really sure what it would be to activate it in the GameCube controller controls, probably the C button or one of the D-pads. I don't know. 
I would be playing with the GameCube controller if I could, but no. B would be jump, and Y would be slide, X would be boost, all the controls would be all jumbled. But yeah, in the least mode, we'll be learning it in a later on tutorial. You can do some crazier things and have better combos and be more powerful overall. Let's see if I can end it before 440, 438, 620, I think it was. Cool if I was very exact, but I'm looking back at it and it's a little bit on the behind side. Okay, it was actually at 438, 620. I might have said 436, I don't know. But yes, how do you like that S rank? And we have our sun medals. Sunstone, I can evolve my sun current into sun flora because it's the best Pokemon in existence. 2020 from 1820. Skill training, wear claw, pierce any defense with a set nick. Hit foes just right and you can dizzy them. Swing both arms while dashing. It's probably one of my favorite things to do because you can dizzify foes and make him able to be picked up more easily. Okay, I'm just gonna press A button to make things a little bit more swift. Secret movie 2, check it out later. Secret illustration 59, check it out later. Secret illustration 23, do not check it out later. And new mission at the Abato Sky Gate. Now for Act 2, Moon Soaked Alley is such a cool name. <laughs> I feel tempted to go behind me and look for stuff, but there's nothing. There's no knob on this door. Let's look around and see if there's some kind of switch. Alright, I wonder where a switch could be. Probably somewhat secluded, but kind of obvious just to introduce the new concept. Whoa, red capsule there. Just gotta be careful and try to remember where all the items are. Uh, they're pretty easy to find in this level. Some of them are a little hard to reach, more than anything, not really too secluded. Yep, you can already tell they love using the wear claw when you're running, just running all over the place, and sometimes that even works when you're in midair, because it's just so crazy like that. I can't really go into my come on and slam attack. We do have an item coming up here, let's just run into these pots, and just cool how Sonic is so destructive that he can do that. Gotta do some house breaking, and get an overturned item, it's weird seeing like that. And I love the view, but we have some killer bees to take down. No, not the guys in Wind Waker, and no, not the Naruto people, if they're called killer bees, something like that. I just remember, like, the rap thing in the Ultimate Ninja Storm game. Not really too ingrained in the culture of Naruto, though, as weird as it may be. I think if you dashed here, you'd be able to jump this distance. I do need to watch a little bit more anime in my life. And yeah, basic dash jumping that we've already gotten our tutorial for. Okay, now we have a mixture of enemies coming up. Flying enemies, you generally can't do too many combos against them. You have to like do the come on and slam attack or just wallop them on up, even though where wallop is uh, moving itself, I'm pretty sure the, that right there is called where wallop or maybe something else is. Once we get more combos, take you down with a come on and slam and then a damn good right hook. There we go, I'm pretty sure this last of these guys. And you can see an item up in the distance. Let's see if I can be cool with it. But no, my camera was changing around, so it kind of didn't allow me. Alright, I'm not really gonna waste my time with this, even though no matter how I approach it, no matter how I cut it, it's not gonna work. Well, it's probably going to waste a little bit of time. I actually had a tiny bit of trouble getting a nest rig on this, probably because of doing this. There we go, kind of dash away, but it still didn't let me land. Okay, screw doing it from that approach. So jump up here, camera is changing all on its own time. One kind of negative thing about this game, as if people didn't really hate the Werehog stages enough, I do like them. It's a nice change from the speediness of Sonic of usual. Let's just go right here, get my rings, because usually when there's big bundles of rings like that, they're important to the collectability stuff, S rank. There's supposed to be an item kind of like right here, but it's a little bit higher up. Let's just dash over, and then from here we're going to go toward the screen and make the most of our stuff. Okay, I thought I messed it up. It's like, come on, don't tell me. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can make this. I highly doubt it. I probably could have made it to the lower part where I actually came from. Oh well. Spending a lot of time here. Let's see if I can get toward that little knobbly doodly before the time is up. Good luck. I doubt it's going to happen. Using my words in a weird way and talking so much, probably slowing myself down. What do you think that is, Sonic? Try grabbing it. Okay, let's do some spinny spoos. It'd be kind of creepy to look outside and then see a werehog just kind of spinning. I guess not the darn werehogs. See these every day. Can move sideways here. Oh really, Chip? I don't want to move sideways. I want to do that. 
Although it kind of wasted my time getting off on the whole climbing dealy. Oh, and moving over like that. Ooh, okay, this might uh, cost me a little bit of time, especially with all this failure. I, I want to say like the time limit for an S rank is 7 to 7.30, so maybe there will be a little bit of leeway. Maybe I should just avoid, avoid rings, although there are some uh, kind of off the beaten path items. Speaking of which, we got one not too far from here. Let's hop up. No, I don't want to go down in history as a martyr. Okay, it's not here because there's an invisible wall. It's a smaller area and a little obvious on the beaten path. Just look how beaten this path is, man. Yeah, I remember. It's like by the bell blue door thing. I had to jump here, but not jump above the door, but jump right by the door. Here it is. This is the last item, I don't want to bother looking over and having things slip while jumbling. Actually, I know for sure that there's another one kind of out of the way, the most off the beaten path one I was speaking of. Alright, we're at full Unleashed Force here, so we gotta fight quite a few enemies, so let's go into Unleashed mode and save a little bit of time. Maybe it's just, maybe my saving grace, maybe it's just maybe. Yeah, great grammar skills, man. Funny how Zelda Brain doesn't recognize Zelda and using this joke like I did back in Wind Waker, even though it wasn't too fast. I was going to say Wind Waker regardless. I caught myself before I even said it, but I don't know. Gotta think of random things to say doing all this fighting. We're only on the second act of many to come. Pretty sure the nighttime stages definitely outweigh the daytime ones, so. That's something to look forward to, but this is Sonic Unleashed, and it's mainly about the Werehog stuff. Alright, there should be a red capsule here because it was a blue one in practice. I don't know why they changed the blue, if you wanna... Maybe it's mainly to help gauge grinding on early levels to get leveled up so easily. Of course, you can get your force by defeating enemies, but... What's the fun in that? Just doing some mindless grinding? No, just grind one character to level 255 and then do the rupee glitch to get 9,999,999 and then just use training mode to level them up. In Hyrule Warriors, of course, I'm talking about that. Speaking of which, I still need to play Hyrule Warriors Legends a little bit more and get the new DLC. A lever. Let's see what it does. A lever? Is it the right lever? I hope it is because even though it's on the left, it's the only lever. Last there was supposed to be one here that we didn't see. I know it's the right one. It's just here to demonstrate. At least we're getting all this tutorial stuff out of the way, so once we get out of all this stuff, things gonna be a lot more streamlined. Alright, here we go. I wanna draw my bosses and then probably go into unleashed mode. Uh is this the last fight? I think it is because it's mainly just platforming to the glory from here, getting our final item. You know what? Unleashed mode. You guys are irking me. Of course, uh the great aura power of it made the boss disappear and let me not get the great ability to take down enemies with... I'm using my words weirdly. Get him while he's still visified. He probably became undisified while he was like that and probably could have wriggled out of my hand. Taking quite a beating here, but there are plenty of rings. These guys are small, fragile, yet strong. Kind of like a bee drill, a mega bee drill. Made even more competitively viable. Wasn't really too much on the competitively viable side beforehand, though. It's still kind of cool how you can poison seal types with Twin Needle. I, I don't know if that changed in recent times, because I remember it being kind of a thing. It's like, well, you can use Twin Needle to poison seal types, and of course now we have Solandit that can poison any Pokemon. It's going to be interesting. I doubt I'll be adding it to my team because Litten is my starter of choice, while most people go for Rallet and nobody seems to like Popplio. Well, Popplio does have his fans. Hey, this is probably the most I've talked about of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Relevant because of Hidden Item and all these Sun and Moon medals that we're getting. Sonic Unleashed just brings out the gamer in you, I guess. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, skipping through all these things and I need to be careful once I get out of this. We should take this one nice and slow. Don't wanna slip and fall. Watch it happen right as soon as I get done. Nope, it goes right into siddling mode. I'll a wind waker. Although you have to initiate siddling. Ooh man, I'm pretty sure I actually am at A rank range, maybe even closer to B rank. I don't know. Hopefully it's before eight minutes. At least you got all the items though. Usually my first time through I'd probably be focusing on S rank, but let's just see what I got. 
Yeah, A rank, it was supposed to be dang at seven minutes. Uh, definitely could have sped things up a little bit more. How far am I? 1824? Uh, I kind of make this a short episode. Did kind of take my time going through this level. And yeah, combo level up got this little thing that's cool. Quite a few more things, even closer to a level up, but all the stuff that we're getting, things get exponentially larger. And it's probably going to bring me into the next level immediately, so I'm going to end the episode like this. Until next time on Sonic Unleashed, where we get into Apatos Night Sage 3, and hopefully see Tails in the midst of everything. Don't toast yourself.